Hey everyone and welcome back. It is officially Wednesday for those of you in A group and it is Thursday for those of you in B group. If you are an online person, this is Wednesday. All right, so how, what we're going to be doing today, how it's going to work. You're going to go ahead and click on Wednesday, English Bill of Rights. Um, once you've got that open, go ahead. First thing, as always, do your daily attendance. Don't know how many times I need to say it, but if you don't do it, the school will end up losing some money. So please, please, please do your attendance. All right. After you've got that done, go ahead and open up the Google Slides for today. All right. So today we're going to be talking about some big ideas of government and the English Bill of Rights. Okay. Here's our agenda. Uh, I'm going to walk you guys through each of these steps. Okay. So go ahead. Uh, in just a second, pause the video and go and take care of your interactive notebook for today. I'm going to walk you through some of it. Uh, vocabulary for today, um, rights. That is going to be our big word for the day, what are rights. Um, also, we're going to be talking about several different ideas of government, and you guys will see those in just a minute. Your learning target for today, I will analyze the English Bill of Rights to determine which ideas of government the colonists believed in as English citizens. Remember, we're making that connection that those people at that time did not view themselves as different than the people that lived in England. They are one in the same. Okay? You're in for today. What do you think rights are? And where do they come from? Okay? Go ahead. Write down what you think. If you're not sure, go ahead and make a guess. Okay? It's just you're in. Uh, topic, if you haven't figured it out, is English Bill of Rights. It is September. It'll be, let's see here, uh, the 9th for those of you in A group and online, and the 10th for those of you that are in B group. Okay, go ahead and pause the video, and after you have that, go ahead and come back. All right, welcome back. Hopefully you got that notebook done. Let's go ahead and keep moving. Uh, here's the instruction video, which it'll be here when you guys are obviously watching this since you clicked on it. All right, so we're gonna talk about the big ideas of government first. You guys can go ahead and write down the definitions on the next five slides in the classwork section of your notebook, okay? So, the first big rule of government is, or big idea of government, is the rule of law, okay? And what we're talking about with rule of law is all people must follow the same laws, and the law should be enforced fairly, okay? So, for your government system, okay, you'll have a set of laws, and everyone must follow those laws, and they will be enforced equally and fairly for all types of people, including those that are in charge. Okay, let's go ahead and keep moving. Uh, go ahead and pause the video and write that down. And then once you're done writing it down, you can unpause and move to the next thing. All right, the next thing is self-government. Let's go ahead and present this. Okay, so self-government means people can make decisions on how their government should work. Okay. As you guys can see in the little cartoon there, it's power to the people. Um, so this is not like a monarchy. There's no king or something here. We, the people, get to decide how our government should work. Okay, we're governing ourselves. Okay, there's the self-government. Uh, go ahead and pause the video and write that down. And once you're done, go ahead and return for the next one. All right, the next one is due process. What does that mean? Okay. It means people have the right to fair and reasonable laws. Okay, officials have to follow rules when enforcing laws, and they need to treat people, all people, in the same way. So, guys, kind of how this works is that basically, this is saying the cops can't just show up at your house and arrest you for wearing a blue shirt. Okay, the laws have to be reasonable. We can't outlaw blue shirts. Um, and if you do get arrested, you get to go through a trial. And I know. Sometimes we see that as a bad thing, but the trial actually ensures that they can't just throw you in prison without any evidence. Okay, so there's this whole set of rules around how you can be arrested to make sure that you aren't just arrested for nothing or based on false evidence. Okay, so due process allows us to feel safe and protected by the system. Um, and also, it makes sure that even the officials have to follow the rules and they can't... Um, make us do what they want by just throwing us in prison. Okay? All right, moving on to the next one. Once again, go ahead and pause and write this down, and after you finish writing it down, you can resume the video. Limited government. Okay? 
What does that mean? Okay, it's a government that has been limited in power by a constitution or written agreement. Basically, the government cannot have too much power. It can't control everything. Okay, we limit how much power the government could have. Pretty straightforward. We'll explain how that all works in the American government when we get to that unit. Okay, um, but for now, go ahead and just pause the video, write down the definition, and once you're done, go ahead and resume the video. All right, the next and last one are rights. What are rights? Okay, that are a set of things that people believe they should be free to do without restrictions. Okay, uh, we talk about things like right to life. Okay, you should be able to live without any restrictions. Okay, no one should be able to take your life away. Um, we have the right to liberty. Okay, you are free. Okay, you can do most things without being restricted. As long as you're not um, impacting what other people can do, you can kind of do what you want. Um, and so forth. Other rights, okay, that we're talking about in this country, about whether or not they should be a right, are things like um, health care. Um, we tend to consider education a right. Um, and those are things we can talk about in class, about whether or not you think they're a right. Um but those are things considered rights by a lot of people. Okay, so go ahead, once again, pause the video, write this down, and then we'll go ahead and continue forward. All right, welcome back. Hopefully you guys got all those definitions down because you will need them in a few minutes here. All right, so the big chunk of work for today, okay, is we're gonna be analyzing the English Bill of Rights. Don't worry, we're gonna go over the first couple together. Okay, so you're going to open up the document attached in Google Classroom uh, named the English Bill of Rights Analysis. Okay, and you'll need to read the directions. We'll go ahead and do that in just a second. Okay, after you've read the instructions, uh, analyze the Bill of Rights section by section. It's broken into sections. You'll see that in just a second. Okay, and how it's going to work, you're going to read each section. Okay, then you're going to write down what that section meant in your own words. And then you're going to write down which big idea or ideas of government um, are being portrayed in there, okay? And you'll see how that works when we give the first couple examples. Uh, there are six total sections. Like I said, we'll do the first two together. After you've completed all six, go ahead and turn in the assignment and then complete your out for the day, okay? All right, let's go ahead and get out of this presentation and look at the document. All right, we'll go back into Google Classroom under Wednesday. It's English Bill of Rights analysis. Uh, your name will probably be in front of it because I am going to create a copy for each of you. All right, let's see, can I make this a little bigger for us? Yes, I'll move my face up out of the way. Okay, English Bill of Rights comparison. Okay, the English Bill of Rights was a document signed by England ruler, England's rulers in 1689. That protected the rights of the people and parliament. Okay, so the colonies had existed for a little while, um, you know, since about, I want to say 1605-ish to all the way up to where we've kind of been in the 1750s with the French and Indian War. Okay, so this is something that affects them. This Bill of Rights are rights that the colonists in America also have. Okay, all right. The document lists grievances against the crown as well as specific rights held by the people in parliament. Okay, so the bunch of people came together to write the English Bill of Rights because they had some issues with the king at the time and the crown of England, and these were things that they wanted to fix, and so the king was kind of forced to sign this thing along with parliament to guarantee that the English people will never have these rights taken away. Okay? All right, below you will find, see it says eight, there's actually only six, so let me go ahead and fix that for you guys. All right, you will find six rights listed in the English Bill of Rights. Your job is to first decide what each statement from the Bill of Rights means and describe it in your own words. Okay, so we'll read a section. We'll say what we think it means, okay, and we'll write it in our own words. Then you must match each declaration with one of the big ideas of government that we learned about, okay, um, 
not really this week. You guys just learned about them in the slides. Okay. All right. Let's go ahead and look at section number one. Take this nice and slow. Number one. That the pretended power of suspending of laws or the execution of laws by regal authority without consent of parliament is illegal. Okay, so let's talk through this section by section. That the pretend power, okay, so by pretend power, I know that's what they're talking about, a fake power, something that was made up, okay, of suspending of laws. Basically, the power to cancel laws for a time or pause laws, you don't have to follow them, okay? Um, that's a pretend power, okay? Or the execution of laws or fa um, basically creating and following new laws, okay? Um, by the king's authority, okay? So the king's authority, his ability to cancel laws or make and follow new laws without parliament consenting, okay? And parliament is kind of the representative government side of England at this time, okay? Um, is illegal. So basically, okay, in our own words, the king cannot cancel or create and use laws without comprehension from parliament. Okay, because this is a representation, we can also do what. Okay? So, the king cannot cancel or create these new laws without permission of the public. Okay, so basically, just talk through this one more time. Okay? We're saying that pretend power, that's a fake power, meaning he does not have this, the king does not have this. The ability to cancel laws or create new laws and use those laws unless he gets permission from parliament. Okay? So, what big idea do you guys think is being portrayed here? Let's go back to our slides. You guys can use your notebook going forward since you have them all written down. Okay? I think the most obvious one here is a limited government. Okay? It's a government that has a limit to its power. Okay? Well, if we look at this, the whole point of this section is they're saying he does not have this power. Okay, they are limiting how much power the king has. Okay, so the big idea I'm going to put in here is limited government. Okay? All right, moving on to this next section. Uh, it is number five, by the way. There were a bunch of different sections in this document, and uh, we selected the ones that are most appropriate for you guys. Okay? So let's go ahead. We're going to skip to number five. All right, I'll go ahead and read it. That it is the right of the subjects to petition the king in all commitments and prosecutions for such petitioning are illegal. Okay, let's go ahead and break this into sections. The first section, the right of the subjects to petition the king. Okay, petitioning the king basically means they have the right to ask questions of him or, you know, be like, hey, I don't think that this was right. Can you please explain where you did this and so forth? Okay. All right, next, the next section, and all commitments and prosecutions for such petitioning are illegal. Very basically, this is saying the king cannot punish someone for asking him questions. All right, so if we're going to put this in our own words, okay, that first part of the section, the people have a right to ask the king questions. The king, under the second part now, cannot punish the people for asking questions. Okay? Uh, this is a good reminder. Okay, if you did not know what the word um, petition or prosecution means, guys, you have access to Google all the time now. Please use Google to help you out. Okay? For those of you in class, obviously, you can just ask me. All right? I'm going to pause real quick and look over uh, the different big ideas of government. And while I'm doing that, you guys can pause and you write down what you think the big idea of government is going to be. All right. See you guys in about.
two minutes. All right, everyone, if you haven't yet, go ahead and write down your guess for what big idea of government you think it is. should be a pretty educated guess. Okay, make sure you read over all those definitions and tell me what you think. All right? I'm going to give you guys a few seconds. Do, 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 There's some Japanese. All right, let's go ahead and look at what I think it is. All right, I think the big idea of government that's going to connect it to this is due process. Okay? People have the right to fair and reasonable laws, okay? Officials have to follow rules when enforcing laws and need to treat all people the same way. Okay? So, part of this, by the way, this is going to be the first big idea, okay? Is the people have the right to ask questions, okay? Of the king. So the king has to follow this process. He has to answer these questions, hear them out, and so forth. Okay? Also, the king cannot just punish people for asking the questions. It's part of the process, okay? He has to treat everyone equally and fairly and allow them to ask him questions. Okay, additionally, okay, pretty obviously, the people have the right to ask questions. Okay, so the big idea, the other big idea here is going to be rights. Okay? They have a right to ask. Okay? All right. I'm going to go ahead and read the remaining sections for you guys, um, because the language is a little confusing at times. Um, if you have, have any questions, okay, please let me know, um, but you will be working on the rest of them on your own, okay? All right, let's look at number six. Here it is. That the raising or keeping a standing army about the kingdom in time of peace, unless that be with consent of parliament is against the law. The next one, number seven. That the subjects, which are Protestants, may have arms for their defense suitable to their conditions and as allowed by law. That the freedom of speech and debates or proceedings in parliament ought not be impeached or questioned in any court or place out of Parliament. That excessive bail ought not be required, nor excessive fines imposed, nor cruel and unusual punishments inflicted. That was number 10. Okay, that are all of the sections. That, yes, that is all of the sections, pardon me, um, for this. Please go ahead, try to put them in your own words and then connect them back to which big idea about government is being portrayed by each one, okay? Once you have that finished, you can go back into the slides, and you may do your outs for the day, okay? Which of the big ideas of government do you think is the most important? And then tell me why. That's all for today, guys. Um, I hope you have a wonderful rest of your day. As always, thanks for listening.